Welcome back to University of West Georgia. Top 20 game, just seconds away from tip-off. Marcus Burnett joined by Will Marlowe, and shortly we'll be joined by Clay Dade, uh, camp director here as well. Right, we're taking a quick second for, uh, leave there waiting for uh, camp director Clay Dade to get here. So Take a short commercial break, and uh, we'll be back shortly with tip-off. And as we mentioned, beautiful facility here at the University of West Georgia. Marcus Burnett, Will Marlowe, and we've just been joined by Clay Day, camp director. Clay, we're here at the top 20 game yet again at another Fat Frost camp. How does it feel as we get ready for the last contest? It feels great. I feel relieved, Marcus. It's been a long three days, but you know what? It's, it's always uh, a pleasurable experience once you kind of settle down and really take in all of the action. Uh, we had great kids that once again, another great group. Um, we appreciate you guys. You've been with us. You've seen the many groups that we've had, and this is one of our better ones. I mean, they're all good. These kids in the 2019 class nationally have really come out. They all look forward to coming to play in the camp. And I tell you, I, I, I watch a lot of these kids throughout the year and, uh, you know, the past couple years, two, three years, and it seems – they have a whole different focus when they come here as opposed to when I've seen them playing in AAU tournaments. They really turn it up and, um, you know, they play with great energy and passion here. And uh, they have something to prove. Proving ground is definitely what this type of event serves as. And you, know, you talk about being able to showcase those talents, but, you know, how do you feel the camp format helps players get better also? I think the format really lends to that. I think that's what we try to do is design a, a camp that not only showcases, but it also really says, you know what, this is kind of where you're at, not only uh, with regard to the talent, but your, where's your skill level? Where is your knowledge of the game? You got a lot of kids here that know how to play. And if you come in and you don't know how to play or you don't know kind of some of the basic things that you should at this point at 14, 15, 16, then it shows, it gets exposed. and um, But it, it's not a bad thing, it just means that's something that you need to go find out and learn about or go, go work on and develop. I think we were able to see that with the white team there in the top 40 game, you know, with good basketball being universal and traveling state to state, we saw great basketball from those guys. Looked like they had been playing together for weeks with the way they were moving the ball and really using each other's strengths wise. I saw that too, I was amazed at the chemistry, I was amazed at some of the uh, the plays, I saw some great ball movement and give and go and, and cutting. And, uh, but again, those are all things that we also emphasize over the past three days. We do that here uh, at Fab Frost Camp. And it was just a great environment and a great three days to, uh, to see kids go from day one where they weren't getting that and weren't playing that way. And then all of a sudden they were after a day and a half. Price with a nice look inside, and it's going to be finished there by number 45, Tiger Campbell. That's a special kid right there, Marcus, uh, number 45, Tiger Campbell from Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, some regard him as the number one player in the class in the, in the United States in 2019 in the country. He's a point guard, about 5'11", really uh, uh, savvy, plays well beyond his years. He's tough, too. I mean, he's really tough. I think that's one of the underrated things about him. He can score. He really sets up his teammates really well. Look at that pass right there. His feel for the game is, is, is outstanding. I mean, it's exceptional. It's rare. And, uh, but he's so unselfish. And that, I talked to him, and I said that's one of the things I'm very impressed about is how good you are but how unselfish you are. Price gets to still come the other way. He's had a great camp, that kid right there, Marvin Price from Baltimore. His hashtag will be slow but steady, uh, <laughs> just the way he plays the game. And that slow is not in a derogatory way at all, but his first step and his ability to score, he's a lot quicker than he looks. Blake Henson, 88. Henson makes it a 6-5 to five game. He's had a really solid camp. Uh, interesting body. He doesn't have the prototype athletic lean body, but I tell you what, he can play basketball. He knows how to play, can score it, can do a lot of things. 6'6". Six, six. Talk about that ability to play. I think Greer 
uh, Ryan Greer in last game, Clay, uh, you know, really showed that there in that top 40 installment, just doing a lot of the little things and being able to score. Nice reverse there uh, by number 18, Kyle Rhodes. Kyle Rhodes, a good player from Lexington, Kentucky. He's just getting better and better. He's almost 6'7 now. Remember, he came to Junior All-American Camp about three years ago out at Swanee Sports Academy, and his game has just grown and grown and grown. But you're right. Um, you know, all of these guys, uh, you know, uh, Ryan Greer is a good example. His, his intangibles come out, and he plays with a high IQ, and he competes. I mean, he is really competitive. He impressed me in that top 40 game. That's Christian DePolar, number 36. He's had a really good, strong camp. Uh, like him a lot. From the Washington, D.C. area. Actually was at Montrose Christian as an eighth grader playing varsity. Talk about some strong areas represented. You mentioned the Lexington, Kentucky area. Obviously a place where I'm going to go out on a limb and say basketball is pretty important. <laughs> then that, that uh, Washington, D.C. area, you know the DMV first and foremost. So it's nice to see the regional and national areas represented here as well. Talk about that element because I know you thrive off of that as well. You know, Marcus, we really try to make a, a, a concerted effort to scour the country and, and uh, you know, unearth or, or, or find where kids are. And, and we're out all the time. We've got a network of scouts. And we every year we have, I think, one of the great footprints for, the, for a national camp. We've, we've got kids from, you know, Los Angeles, California, Phoenix, Arizona. We had a former NBA player, Eddie House, his son, here this weekend who made the top 40 game, just couldn't play in it, couldn't be here. He had to go catch a flight, Jalen House from the Phoenix area, the, um, you know, the MVP of the camp, Jovan Blackshire, who you're going to be hearing a lot about, really good guard, number 28 in the camp. He had to leave also from the Arizona area. But, you know, we attract kids from all over. We have kids from Texas. We have kids from uh, the Northeast. We have kid. We had a very talented kid who suffered an illness uh, yesterday and really got dehydrated, but he was having a great camp. Deontay Long, you're going to be hearing about him from Milwaukee. Some say he's the best wing scorer the city of Milwaukee has ever seen at six foot five, six foot six. He's a talent. He was off to a great start in camp. He would have been a top. He was a top 20 game selection. Just couldn't play. Plenty of talent here. You see the big fella off the mark on that jumper. Just cut. Stuck between a rock and a hard place there. It's poked out of there. Now, Will Marlowe, you were you were on hand with us for the Super Soft Camp. Talk about, you know, as a player that, uh, as a guy that does his own homework on a lot of events and players, talk about the junior All-American slate of events when you look at Fab Frost and Super Soft and what you've seen from the outside looking in. Well, I mean, that Super Soft Camp, that was a one heck of a camp. Those guard, that guard play there really impressed me. You know, you had Schubert, McCabe. And like you were saying, McCabe, McCabe's really grown into his, you know, like you said, he had his handles there when he was in eighth grade, but he's really grown into an all-around basketball player. But it's really fun coming to these camps and seeing these guys compete with the, the top prospects in their own class at their own age group and see how they handle it. And I've really been impressed with these big men, too. These big men, you know, 14 and 15 years, years old here, really still trying to grow into their own bodies. You know, they have the height, and, and but they're really still trying to go into that physical physical play and learn how to play with their with their size, but, but Clay, have you noticed really too too much of a dif difference between the big man here showcased at the Fab Frost camp and at the Super Soft camp in terms um, of the physical play and playing with their, uh, you know, playing with their own height and learn, learning how to play with their big bodies? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we've been fortunate that we've uh, had some kids both at Super Soft and here at Fab Frost that we, uh, we didn't, we didn't know they were that far along, and when they got into the camp setting, they really showed what they could do. There's one right on the block there from uh, from Mississippi, number 34, 66, 225, uh, John Rawls. I uh, really like him a lot. He, um, uh, you know, he made a name for himself this weekend, just like many of the super soft camp uh, bigs that we had there. Really surprising. That kid right there I liked a lot right there making his move. Great move right there, strong kid. Number 59 with the lime green undershirt on. His father uh, is, uh, uh, you guys might remember, that's Nick Evtimoff. His father is uh, Evtimoff sitting on the baseline down there who played at North Carolina with Vince Carter and Mokhtar Njai and all those guys. Um, uh, I think Shaman Williams was on that team and others. So, uh, you know, he comes from good bloodlines, and he's going to be an outstanding player. He led the camp. Evtimoff down there led the camp in rebounds. So we got some good big guys here at camp this week. Coast to coast with the bucket there, number 42, Jordan Wright. 
Yeah, like you said, Eftimov leaving the camp rebound 64 through six game sessions, <laughs> averaging 10.7 a game. Oh, he's an animal. I mean, he's so tough inside. He's physical. Um, not quite as big as his dad yet. His dad makes him look small, and that kid's, you know, I mean, he's 6'5", 230 maybe. You know, his dad's like 6'9", 270. Uh, big guy. Getting the roll there was uh, Williams. Uh, Jalen Williams on the other end right before. Uh, Jalen's a good player. Right back, yeah. Marcus, he's from uh, Charleston, South Carolina. You're going to be hearing a lot about him. Now, that kid right there, he hit a big three the previous trip. Uh, he's been doing that all camp. Really put together very well. He's about 6'5", 190, uh, right down there, number 12 uh, for the blue team. That's Marcus Watson from the Winston-Salem uh, area in North Carolina, and he plays with CP3 All-Stars, uh, Chris Paul's team. Man, that guy, he's built like a brick house. He's extremely explosive and athletic, uh, was one of the leaders in the camp with dunks. A uh, very powerful player, but he has unlimited range. And I mean unlimited range. He's a great scorer. There's John Rawls getting that easy bucket, number 34. He's a tough kid from Mississippi. You know, I was talking with Source Hoops, who was here on site, and they were really uh, you know, talking about his ability to knock down those hooks consistently uh, with his back to the basket. And we know that's a commodity even above the, the freshman level, uh, you know, just, just at all levels to be able to have a guy that can score back to basket like that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that's a, if you have developed that early, that's a good thing. There he is with the step back, the kid uh, Watson. He's very talented offensively. What we're trying to do is push him to be more well-rounded to play uh, more with more willfulness defensively. There's a great look. That kid right there just has a tremendous feel for the game who delivered that pass. That's uh, Tiger Campbell, some regard as the number one player in the class. He was all state in Tennessee this year, Tennessee high school basketball as an eighth grader. Uh, he was all state, I believe first team all state. He's a special kid, a special player. He'll play at La Lemire, the national top 20 program in Indiana, He's transferring. Being a Hoosier myself, I know about that program very well. Some good basketball, and safe to say with his court vision, he's got the eye of the Tiger. Sorry, I couldn't let that punt go. <laughs> I liked it. I, 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 was, I was waiting for that about was too 30 good seconds to, resist. to throw that one in. I'm kind of upset <laughs> I didn't come up with that one. I've been looking for one, but that was a great one. Hey, man, having to uh, to wear the hat you've worn and focus on uh, on having to get another successfully run camp, you, you've had your – your plate more than full, and so far, so good. Plenty of time left here in this top 20 game as we got another three-point attempt. It's off the mark. You look like a little heat check in the big man. Yeah. yeah. I'll tell you who I like, guys. He's on the floor now. Hadn't done a whole lot yet, but if you look down there, number 35 and White is a kid uh, who I, I would have called the breakout performer. I don't know about the big kid they voted, but – I, I, I like the kid Grant Sherfield, number 35 from Dallas, Texas. Plays for Nike Team Texas uh, and uh, 2019 team. He is special. I mean, he's got unbelievable speed. He dunks vertically at just six feet tall. Um, he caught several alley-oops during the camp for dunks two-handed. He shoots with unlimited range. He can score it at all three levels. Uh, he's got the short game, He's in between game. He's got the long ball. He is a tenacious defender, but he's very humble and quiet, but a great teammate and respectful, and he made a name for himself. So uh, you'll be hearing about him, Grant Sherfield. There's a nice play right there. That's Kyle Rode, the big man, feeding you know, uh, Jordan Wright, I think, for a layup. And that's another dimension to Kyle Rode's game. He's not just a big man who rebounds. You know, he can step out and hit the three. He's, uh, there he is catching an alley-oop. Um, you know, he knows how to play. He's got a strong frame, and he can pass. He looks for people, and he gets it. He understands how to play. 17 to 24 is your score. Two minutes, 35 seconds and counting uh, left to play here in the first half. Team Blue with it. They get it to number 77 there. Marcus, did you notice that we named all of our camp teams after our alumni, we had 12 alumni go in the NBA draft this past Thursday from this camp. 12, including uh, Carl Towns, Moutier, uh, Jaleel Okafor, D'Angelo Russell going number two to the Lakers. What a surprise that was. Um, you know, guys like R.J. Hunter. Uh, we had Team R.J. here during camp, and everybody, even the kids were asking, who's R.J.? Who's R.J. Hunter? 
And then when I mentioned what he did in the NCAA tournament and that he went 28 to the Celtics, now there's like some identification. So yeah. our camp <laughs> teaches, our camp, <laughs> yeah, how about that? Who's R.J. Hunter? Uh, you know, he's the newest millionaire from Atlanta. So, you know, how can you not know him? But, um, you know, it's, it's amazing that, um, you know, this is where these kids find out some things that they didn't learn. Our workshops are some of the least talked about, most underrated components to the camp. Our workshops, we, we have a history seminar where we show them uh, the history of the game and contributions from black Americans to the early game of basketball that they may not know. So there's a lot of things that go on here, more than basketball. It yeah, the workshops like you said, more than cute. basketball, you know, I, I heard you talking down there and you mentioned the SAT and the ACT, and that really, st that really stood out to me. Because, you know, when you come to these camps, you figure that a lot of it's going to be the player development aspect of it. But really, you're kind of growing these, growing these athletes into men. Absolutely. I, you know, you have to be, I think if you're involved with these young people, Will, you have to be uh, just as focused on their total development as people uh, as you are on their basketball development. So we're going to have a quick... Uh Quick ball swap. Not sure if the uh, the PSI was correct on that on that first one. <laughs> Where's Tom Brady? No. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, he had he had nothing to do with it, Clay. Nothing to right. do with it. Right. Price. Nice Marvin Price has had an outstanding camp. He's from Baltimore. He plays with uh, a DC team, though DC Premier, the uh, Under Armour team. He is an interesting player. He he's uh, six four, about two hundred pounds. Really explosive. Uh, he he was one of the leaders in the camp in dunks, but he also has a pretty good perimeter game, and he does everything. He rebounds. He's going to be an interesting prospect going forward. Fun watching him on day one. He and uh, and Tavion Cullum had quite a quite a head to head matchup going. Yeah, they did. That was a great matchup in camp. There's a kid who shot it really well. He didn't make that one, but 36, Christian DePolar, coming off an ACL injury, and I thought he had an outstanding camp. Another price assist, Jordan Wright, done a great job just running the floor, able to pick up buckets. Jordan's from the New Orleans, Louisiana area. Good player. Williams kicks it out to the top of the key. Big Ice time shooter cream. right there, that's uh, Chris Harris. Also plays with Nike Team Texas. Nice catch. Chris Harris has had a good week. Saw a game where he had at least six three-pointers uh, th there on day one. Uh, he was, he was he on lights fire. out. Man. That's where he was. He played really well. He does everything pretty well. I just don't like his line of questioning. We were in a workshop, and uh, he kind of embarrassed the camp director. Did you ever play? And if, <laughs> if you did, why didn't you make the NBA? <laughs> I had to tell him I wasn't good enough. P pretty straightforward way of question. Yeah. I did tell him I played in the ACC. Yeah. That kind of shut him up. <laughs> Most definitely one of basketball's best conferences. And I think, you know, when you talk about your perspective, Clay, obviously you said you didn't make it to that level, but I think it really helps you when you're helping these players correct some of the things that can prevent them from making it to that next level. Sure, year. sure, on and off the floor. Uh, one of our one of our seminars, one of our workshops was domestic violence, and we did real life situation role play. So, <laughs> you had uh, you had some of the guys. We'd call them up and say, "Hey, we need some actors. We need." So now you're getting all the outgoing class clown guys volunteering, <laughs> right? And then when they get get up there, I told a few guys, I said, "Watch this, watch this." So we said, "Okay, you're gonna be uh, the guy." Okay. You're going to be the girlfriend. <laughs> oh, no, 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 I don't know. And they, he headed back to sit down, and but we got him to do it, and it was great. And so we talked about, you know, the whole aspect of athletes and domestic violence and respecting females and understanding the law and crossing the line between when things get beyond the point of no return and put yourself in, in a legal situation. These are all things that um, I feel are important to developing not just the athlete, but the person as these kids mature and transition to high school. Very important. When you talk about transition and just, uh, you know, keeping things in the right perspective. Obviously, everybody wants to make it to the NBA or wants to make it to a certain level. But your thoughts on just being able to maximizing your potential and finding the fit you know, you know, with your program, whether it's the North Carolinas, the Dukes, the Kentuckys, or if there's a better fit for a program out there. Oh, we talked about that. We had uh, the great uh, Atlanta area high school coach, former 
former National Coach of the Year from 2014 by USA Today. I mean, just came back from a, a, a tour with uh, USA Basketball in Argentina with the under-16 national team that won the gold a couple weeks ago. Uh, Charm White, Charmin White from Miller Grove High yeah. School was one of our guest speakers, and uh, he was fantastic uh, here at camp. He, um, he talked about that very thing about fit because some of the parents asked, well, if we had a Q&A with them, and they asked, well, what are the, um, you know, when you talk about recruiting, you know, is it, should we be looking at going to the biggest schools or, uh, you know, and he said the most important thing is fit. Yeah. It's not how high you go in terms of high major, mid major, low division one. It's fit. Because the bottom line is you want to be on the floor playing. You don't want to be sitting. He didn't come wearing that new gold medal he just won, did he? I, 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 I was hoping that he brought it, and he, he's such a humble guy, he did not bring it. But we needed some bling in the house. We needed the kids to see that. Fun, funny how everything's intertwined. You know, speaking of Coach White, he won the, uh, the gold medal with the USA 16 and under team. He's also got six state championship rings. Six straight. Six straight state championship rings, and really has uh, been – on the path to some of those rings by winning some key regional games in this very building that we're standing in now. So I'm sure it was a pretty fun trip for him. He probably said no problem when you asked him to come out this way. He did, and, and you know, he's great. I, I really appreciate him coming out, coming off a long trip, being in the winter of Argentina. You know, it's winter down there. So uh, he was great, and we appreciate him. Uh, there's a nice pass from Tiger Campbell. I really like that kid. I like how unselfish he is. I like his feel for the game. He also has a, uh, has a passion for playing the game. I love kids who have a passion for playing the game, and you've got to have that. Got to have it. There's a kid I like a lot. Uh, not doing a whole lot here in this All-Star game format. That doesn't matter. But uh, Marcetus Leach in blue, number 16. Uh, you're going to hear uh, from him. He's about 6'4", 6'5", from... Um, uh, kind of from Arkansas, that Arkansas, uh, Oklahoma area, and uh, or Arkansas, Missouri area, yeah. and he's a good player. He's really uh, talent. Love this energy uh, throughout the camp. Uh, he's really fired up about you know taking advantage of this proving ground on both ends. Yeah, there he is. Just gave it up to Nick Evdomov. Now that's one thing Evdomov may struggle with at the next level. He doesn't have much explosiveness, doesn't have much lift or athleticism. This might be a three right here. Yeah, that's what he does. See, he's so smart. Rather than take it in there, hey, let me just take what I what what the defense is giving me. And for him, that three is like a layup. Tiger Campbell, really smart player. Really gets it. Classy kid too. He made it an 18-point game. Left him off. Strong move, but it gets stuck, so we're just going to go the other way. Something's wrong with those rims. They got to put some grease up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's inter interesting, too, because you don't see Tiger Campbell on the top uh, 10, 15, however many, however many players on this point, uh, top scorers in the, in the camp sheet, which just shows you how unselfish of a player he really is. Yeah, he did lead the camp in assists. There you go. He won our assist award. 21 assists in four games. All these kids played six games. He played four and led the camp in assists. There he is. There he is. Hands in the right place. Now he wants to make a play for someone else. Yeah, he's having fun out there, and that's yeah. something you, you really like to preach to these guys, too, at these camps that you host. Yeah, he uh, he's, he's guys like him are great for the camp because they already are known by his peers. All the kids know who he is. But when they find out how great a guy he is and that he's really into having fun and being unselfish, now they have a, they're inspired and they're, and they're playing with a different kind of uh, uh, swag. There it is. Oh, thought that was going to be good. Yeah, they missed that one, but the you know, numerous guys underscored this point and just talk about it. The basketball has energy, man. When it's being moved around, you got guys that are good teammates. You're making basketball plays. Everybody feeds off of it. We've seen both teams in the white jerseys in these games really exemplify that point. Absolutely. And, and you know, basketball is, is about expression. It's about emotion. And it's also about rhythm. And what we try to talk to kids about here at camp is understand the rhythm of basketball. When a ball is moved, you talked about the ball movement, Marcus. Um, you know, the rhythm of a possession. 
Don't kill a possession by a quick shot or by selfishness. Allow everybody to get involved and make a play when it's necessary. Time and score situations, we try to talk to them about what's the score? What's the time on the clock? Have we scored in the last several possessions? If we haven't, what do we need to do? What's the play that needs to be made? Do we need ball reversals and player movement, ball movement, those kinds of things. Nice defense, Blue, real good. That's uh, Jordan Wright on the cut to the basket, number 42, he's had a really good camp. Had a, had a lot of layups just by running the floor and taking advantage of that uh, ball movement from his teammates, Price, coast to coast. You know, we're just glad we got out of here with no real major injuries uh, once again. And um, a lot of athletes out here. Yeah. I was going to be rebounded out of there. Now Watson will bring it up. He's in range as soon as he steps in the county. He's shooting, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's looking for his scoring opportunity. He's a really talented scorer, though. Yeah, it was 22.8 through the six game sessions that he played. He actually only played in four game sessions, but I was 22.8 points per game throughout those sessions. Yep. Got to appreciate that you don't got to tell me twice scores out there. No problem. And there's always <laughs> room for a scorer, right? There he goes, he's looking for it. Nine minutes, 30 seconds and counting. Uh, left to play here in the second half. Nine minutes till vacation, I can't wait. <laughs> Got my eye on number 80, uh, Jalen Williams. We've already talked about you know, one of the best guards there in the South Carolina area. I think he still wants to make his presence felt a little bit more uh, out here in this game. But he's guarded by Tiger Campbell, so that, that, could, that could become an interesting matchup as this one goes on. It could. Let's see uh, these final nine minutes. Love to see them uh, compete. Jalen's a good player. He's, he's really um, – uh, he works hard at his game. He's a smart kid, really smart kid. Plays with a lot of confidence. And uh, he's very under – kind of under-publicized. Um, and uh, I think he'll continue to kind of make a name for himself nationally in this camp. This camp and his performance here this weekend will help. Campbell brings it across. Guarded by Williams now, he'll kick it up top. Cullum gets it inside, but it'll be called for a travel. So Cullum and Christian Brown, they did a good job feeding off of each other uh, the entire camp. They're on their camp squad. And really impressed with Cullum and what he was able to do on the open court, not only scoring but getting others involved. Yeah, yeah, and we're really missing Christian Brown. He is a sensational athlete at 6'6 six, six and a half, almost 6'7. Uh, he runs like a greyhound in the open floor. He led the camp in dunks. Um, I mean, he's got those flying locks and uh, – he, he is a freestyling, freewheeling player with a tremendous personality and attitude, very coachable, and a, and a super wattage smile like Magic Johnson, and, and he's a joy to be around. I hate that he wasn't able to stay and be in this game. He had to leave early. But uh, he won our top prospect for the camp. Uh, we give a top prospect. Just to give you a little history on that award, uh, the number – Seven pick in the draft this year to the Denver Nuggets, Emmanuel Moutier, who many thought would be a two, three, or four pick in the draft. He was our top prospect in 2010. He won that award over Jaleel Okafor in that same camp. And so uh, good things portend to the top prospect at the Fab Frosh camp. I tell you, that's great company just to be mentioned in, uh, to be able to come and follow on the footsteps of that, that type of lineage of players. We're very impressed. What a pass. What a pass. Marcus Watson, I'll have to congratulate him after the game. I've never seen him make a pass like that. I guess he couldn't shoot it from 75 feet, <laughs> so he had to pass that one. Good thing for him. We've got that one archived, so he can yeah. go and review that one. Film study for him. That's good. Rebound now. They get it in the hands of Williams. I kid, but I love Marcus. There's, You'll see his talent right there. I'm telling you, he is some kind of scorer and shooter. I mean, at six foot five, he's got big time range. There it is, nice pass and dunk. Kyle Rode, number 18, with the back, back bounce pass to the cutting Marvin Price, athletic six foot four wing from Baltimore, Maryland. 
He's going to be an interesting talent to watch over the next several years. Hope he continues to work and develop his perimeter skills and shooting. Great slashing player, though. Let's see what this kid does. He's so good. Campbell kicks it over to Price. This column guarded by Watson. He'll try to match him back with a three. Look at that he hustle. That yeah. kid, I'll tell you, for a kid that has the name and the rep that he has, and, and, you know, he's already had some major accomplishments, he makes plays that, you know, guys with that kind of resume you see don't always see make. He hustles all the time. Plays all out. Smart player. Tiger Campbell. Remember the name. You know, I was talking with one of the coaches. I always forget coach's name. Uh, he played at Georgia State. Uh, he's the coach there at the uh, at the end of the bench there for Team Blue. We call him Bird, but that's, Bird. that's Mike Zach. Mike Zach from uh, Tampa, Florida. Played at Georgia State. He's from uh, interesting trivia about Mike, uh, Mike Zach. Uh, we call him Bird. He looks like Larry Bird. Mike was a heck of a player. Uh, a couple of good trivia points. One, uh, he played 20 years ago in my exposure events when we were headquartered in the Washington, D.C. area as a high school player. When he was at Grant Hills High School, South Lakes High School in Reston, Virginia, in the D.C. area, and he broke every one of Grant Hills High School records. That's what kind of player Bird Mike Zach was. I mean, that, that about speaks for itself. <laughs> That about speaks for itself. I'll get to that point I was making after we take a look at this legit stats instant replay. Watson had just hit that three-pointer, uh, but you see the nice pass has dropped off to Marvin Price, and the price is right on the two-hand flush uh, there by Marvin. But Coach talked about as a player, you want to be able to let your talent speak for itself, but you don't want the ifs or the buts uh, to be caveats that come along uh, with the way that you play. And by that he means you don't want to be a guy that can shoot, you know, the, the, the crap out of it. But then they say, but uh, can they keep him in the classroom? But uh, is he going to get in trouble off the court? But, you know, you don't want to be that guy that has a comma in the butter if after your game. That's right. You don't. And uh, we really talk to these kids about that. We talk to them about um, working on their weaknesses as people and as players and try to get rid of all the butts. <laughs> Or minimize them. Uh oh, we might see. Oh, okay. Thought we might see something special there. Here's Watson. Drops it off. Gets back into play. Strong kid, I'm telling you. He's really strong. Has a great feel for scoring. He approached three minutes. Talked about his feel for scoring. We'll take a look at this replay. Williams able to pass it ahead. That's way too much room for a shooter like Watson. As you can see exhibit A for the confidence that he has out there on the perimeter. Ooh, Marvin Price with a three. Yeah, he's got a nice jump shot for a big man, Marvin Price. Does. Yeah. Average 15.4 points a game through five game sessions. Like Price's size, his ability to mix it up really kind of re represents that Baltimore player. He's going to play defense. Physical play means nothing to him. Toughness. He when I think of home. Baltimore, I think of toughness, just like you yeah. just said, Marcus. Those kids are so tough. And you got to be, you, as they say, when you're in Baltimore, you got to be more careful. <laughs> <laughs> Two minutes left on the clock. Be more. See if the be more representative is done scoring in this one. Here's Sheriffield. I like that kid. He can really score. He's got a great temperament about him. Um, he's a good teammate. Can shoot it. Competes. That's Blake Henson finishing number 88. He's from the uh, Tampa, Florida area. Yeah, I saw you... Uh, Complimenting Sheriffhood on his usage of the curl uh, in one of the camp games earlier today. Just, you know, we it's a prime example of how aside from the talent and, and, and just, uh, you know, your ability with the ball in your hand, being able to have that basketball IQ to move without the ball and do those, some of th those types of things can make a world of a difference, man. It makes a world of difference, especially when you finally get it in your head that it's important and that, hey, the right, the people that are, 
the right people see those kinds of uh, 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 things that don't show up in the box score. College coaches, they know exactly who fits for them. They also know who knows how to play. And when we see something like that, that's when we know somebody understands that there's more to play in the game than having the ball in your hand to be effective. I would love to see how many points Jordan Wright has. I, he easily has at least 14 points just off running the floor and being able to get easy buckets nonstop. He, he's what I call, Will and Marcus, an opportunity scorer. There he is again. He's just waiting <laughs> for it now. <laughs> he, he scores it like water runs. Quietly, too, right? Yep. Not much defense out here now. End of game, 20 seconds. Yeah, everybody's thinking about Interstate 20 uh, right That's now. That's right. <laughs> and rightly so. There's hey, Grant hey. Sheriffville with the flush. Oh. That one goes out of bounds. It'll be Team White's ball. They're still looking to get one more in. Oh. So we appreciate you joining us here. On SUV TV, as it's a final score, Team White going to take the victory in this one. We see Grant Sheriffield send us home with the flush. I'm Marcus Burnett. He's Will Marlowe, Clay Dade. Any closing thoughts? Just want to thank uh, everyone involved with Fab Frost Camp. Another great uh, camp in our ninth annual Fab Frost Camp Freshman All-American Camp. Thank you to everybody, our staff, our coaches. Thank you to SUV TV and you, Marcus. Thank you again. Appreciate you joining us, signing off here from the Peach State.